to reveal how plans will have a positive impact on Lincolnshire visitor economy, will you please welcome Mary Powell, Tourism Development Manager at Lincolnshire County Council. Morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a project that I've been working on uh, since uh, 2006. I am absolutely passionate about it, uh, probably to the point of obsession. Uh, but what I want to talk to you today is to make sure that you are also, uh, that A, you know it's happening, but B, you know something about more than just what's happening, what's actually going to be achieved at Lincoln Castle. Because this project, when we got our uh, lottery approval against a lot of competition, one of the things that HLF liked about the project was the fact that it was going to have wider economic benefits than just for Lincoln Castle. And it's always been, you know, in my book, that it's going to be the impacts on Lincoln and Lincolnshire are the important things about this project. Um, so that means that I feel that all of you need to know about it too. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid it is a project that I can bore on for some considerable time, so if you need to stop me, uh, please do. So this is where we're at at the moment. Uh, the, in March, we had the uh, lottery uh, long process. Our first round one went in in 2008. Um, so it has taken a long time uh, to, get it, to get it sorted. We also have been spending 2.1 million on the Heritage Skills Centre, uh, which is just being completed. It's a very beautiful building. So it is £22 million pounds in all. Uh, and, you know, everything, we are working frantically to make sure, we, and we will be ready uh, by 2015, uh, but need to ensure that everybody else is ready too. Um, so once, uh, because the Heritage Skills Centre is already complete, that's where I wanted to start uh, and show you uh, what this building is, because actually this, I think, has some interesting tourism impacts too. Uh, this was uh, our kind of image for what we wanted to create. Uh, this is sort of an artist's impression uh, of the building. And this is the site we started off with. Um, it's a site within the castle that uh, not very prepossessing. And fortunately, most of the time, you couldn't see it unless you peered over that uh, when you were on the, uh, on the grass. It wasn't until you got to this wall that you could actually peer over. And when you did peer over, what horrors uh, that you saw. What we've realised through doing this early project is the logistics of doing anything at the castle are something of a nightmare. Um, our castle gates were designed to repel uh, and you know, getting a concrete lorry or actually any sort of lorry in uh, can be incredibly difficult. But by building the Heritage Skills Centre, we have learnt an awful lot, which for the next phase of the project will stand us in good stead. Uh, because of the archaeology, we had a, a concrete uh, base um, and this took, we couldn't get the concrete lorries through the gates, so the concrete had to be pumped from Castle Square, uh, which is quite a long way. Uh, and it took, uh, I think it was 26 hours, and they worked all through the night. Uh, we were in a, a kind of a, a window where there was no frost, uh, and there really was no leeway, uh, so we just had to keep, well, they had to keep on working. This was uh, during the build, uh, and the idea of, of very low-lying building, uh, and the idea was that it would fit in the landscape of the castle in a very discreet way. Um, it has a lot of environmental features, and the grass roof, you know, mirroring, you know, the grass lawns, the grass of the Lucy Town Mott, uh, and uh, just the way that it fit, fits in. I have had a walk on the roof, and those uh, steel. Um, ropes that you can uh, see on the roof for, for the lawn when you're mowing the lawn is that you tie yourself to those and this is it at um, this was at the very end of September uh, the 1000 years uh, which was the first event where we uh, allowed access to the building and if I can just explain how the building works is that it has a kind of central core through this door that goes right through the middle as another door at this end so the public will always be able to walk through the middle of the building. There are two big workshops, one either side, so people will be able to peer into the workshops uh, and see what, uh, what's going on without actually going into them. Because if you're working on something very detailed, you don't really want somebody actually peering literally over your shoulder. Uh, 
Um, sorry, I didn't to do that. The two workshops, um, the one on this side is the kind of clean and dry uh, for things like stained glass. Um, and then the one on the other side is sort of wet and dirty for things like stone masonry, lime plasters. Uh, but I think there's enormous potential for, there will be uh, vocational courses and apprenticeships um, and those sorts of longer uh, lasting courses, but we want to run kind of taster days, weekend courses, the kind of hobby market, people who are doing things to their own homes. Um, and I did a, a taster day down at the Tower of London um, on a, a stone masonry course, and it's fascinating how they can't run enough courses for the, to, to meet, meet the demand. Uh, and people, it was actually hugely enjoyable. I was absolutely rubbish, but it was hugely enjoyable uh, and very kind of uh, soothing. So I think that Taster Days, is, there is huge potential for running kind of weekend and day courses here. Um, so these are some of the, uh, the skills uh, we're currently working on the, um, the course programme. I think we've had our very first course, which I think was a stained glass uh, course. Um, we don't want to duplicate anything that's already being done in Lincoln. So, you know, the Cathedral Workshop have worked very closely with us on the design of the building and also the university uh, and Lincoln College. Um, we're not duplicating, we're, we want to add to. And I think that we can create a, a real sort of USP for heritage skills uh, at Lincoln. Um, and we had another success with Heritage Lottery, uh, a bid that we put in uh, together with uh, the cathedral, uh, and then we uh, had it a, a second award from them because they were pleased with how it was going, which is offering uh, heritage skills bursaries. Uh, and uh, so this is a five-year programme. But again, it, it, to me, it absolutely fits in with uh, what we're doing at the castle because without those people with those skills, how do you keep buildings of this sort of age in decent condition? Because they constantly need uh, repair. So going on to the main project, which is called Lincoln Castle Revealed. And it's called that because we are opening up the site. We are opening up the buildings. Um, we're opening up the walls. We've never had a full wall walk circuit. So we'll be cre creating a full wall walk circuit for the very first time. But also the quality of the uh, wall walk at the moment is, is quite poor. So we'll may be making uh, vast improvements to it. Opening up the uh, Victorian prison. The male prison has been, we open it for odd events, but it has been closed for decades. It's the most amazing space. Great stories to tell. We will have a new contemporary building that will house Magna Carta and Charter of the Forest. Uh, and uh, a very high standard of uh, access, the disabled access for a building that dates from 1068 is going to be quite extraordinary and I think a very strong selling point for us. Uh, and again, this, the visitor infrastructure will be vastly improved uh, from what we have now. So I want to take you through the sort of different elements uh, of, uh, uh, of, the, of the project. Uh, so this is actually uh, the south side. This is the area where there's never been access to the wall walks. Um, very difficult to achieve, uh, but we have our architect is uh, a genius, I think, um, and we have worked out how we can achieve um, the access. Sometimes we have to go uh, the, attach the wall walk to the to sort of the edge of the building, and sometimes we can uh, go through um, blocked up. Door, we have found a doorway uh, that was blocked up, so we're able to um, unblock it and uh, create access. Uh, again, you can see how the levels change every, every few, few yards, so it's, it's been very challenging. And it has a sort of stainless steel um, guardrail, maintenance-free, uh, but also when you're actually down looking up at the walls, it, because it's so fine, it actually becomes almost invisible. So it's, it, it is very, very discreet. Um, and you can see that actually up there, that's as far as you can get to now. This is where you have to turn around and go, uh, and go back. But you can see the difference in level between, uh, between there and, and this new section uh, of wall walk that we're creating. So you can kind of see what sort of a, uh, a challenge it, it has been. 
This is, was taken a few months ago. There's slightly less scaffolding on this south section uh, now than, the, than there was. But this is a, the repair of these walls is a massive uh, un undertaking. Uh, and, you know, we're not talking of a few stonemasons chip, chip, chipping away. We're talking about teams of, of stonemasons. Um, and, uh, you know, the work is going very well and, and on schedule. But, of course, we can only do this uh, work during the lime season uh, because of uh, the frost. So it does actually, although we've got several years to do the work, when you take out the periods when you can't work, it does actually narrow down. So the next phase um, that we're about to, to start, we will be having uh, three teams of masons so that we can work on different sections uh, at, the, at the same time. Now this is on the east side uh, of the... Um, uh, the, this, is, this is the East Curtain Wall, and this is, shows the new access that we're creating to get onto the walls. It's two towers. It sort of looks like one from this photograph, but one is the stairs, and the other is the lift. Uh, and we, what we're doing, we can't create a wheelchair access for the full circuit, but we can create it for the East Wall, which has the best views. So it gives you a wonderful view of the west front of the cathedral, and it also gives you a wonderful view into the site. So we decided that, you know, what we, knew, we knew we could never create a full circuit, but what we wanted to do was achieve the best views. And the reason that the, these towers are set back with a sort of almost a bridge uh, to get you onto the wall is that, so when you're walking from the cathedral across Castle Square uh, to, to the castle, you cannot see uh, that tower peeping over um, the, the battlements because it's, because it's set, set back. It gives you a slightly sort of different view uh, of how the, two, how the two towers fit in. Now Magna Carta uh, is going to have its own building. Uh, it's sort of sandwiched between the Georgian debtors prison at the front and the Victorian prison uh, at the back. In, in one of the courtyards. So you will actually, you can see it better in that sort of almost aerial shot, um, is that you will walk from, this is the Georgian um, prison and this is the Victorian prison, and there's a sort of connecting corridor. And we have uh, West, these are basically prison yards, or were prison yards, so we have three of them. Uh, there's one south one, west one, and this is the, this is the east courtyard. Uh, and you will walk along a causeway uh, into this new building. This is actually an original wall, so we're actually slotting it in very, very neatly, uh, and you will immediately go uh, underground. And uh, this is the vault where Magna Carta and Charter of the Forest, and there'll be a third case, which will be a guest document. So we'll have a constantly changing programme uh, of, of uh, documents in, in that third case. Obviously, that's good to ring the changes, but it's also good for getting repeat visitors uh, to come and have a look for sort of exciting things that we can, that we can borrow. Uh, and we're already getting quite an exciting programme of, of things that people are willing to lend us. There is also a cinema space. Um, it's almost circular, uh, and there will be, we'll be showing sort of films that tell the story uh, about Magna Carta and its sort of 800-year life. Uh, it's a, a very small document. Uh, it's not illuminated. It, it's, you know, it's, it is quite dull-looking. Um, it's not... So what we have here isn't an object-rich um, exhibition. And actually, film is a very good medium to tell the stories about Magna Carta because... Magna Carta is often what it means to people, so it's uh, it's more sort of an emotional response. Uh, and putting Magna Carta underground is actually Magna Carta likes being cold and dark, uh, so in actual fact, it's quite a good space for it. And it, as you can see, it doesn't look like a uh, a huge space. But with a document that's about that by about that, there is a limit to how many people can crowd around it anyway. So there's no point to making an enormous room uh, to house it uh, because you know, only a certain number of people can actually sort of uh, crowd around it anyway. Just talking about some of those documents that you know, we're looking to borrow, the cathedral have the most wonderful collection of documents uh, and we've also been promised uh, two very exciting documents uh, from the Houses of Parliament already. 
But this, is, this document, you know, if we think Magna Carta at 1215 is old, uh, this is 1072, and this is from William the Conqueror uh, telling the bishop to build a cathedral at Lincoln. Um, so, and it probably looks quite big, but it's actually about three inches by about eight inches. Um, and it, it starts off, um, you know, sort of William, King of the English, uh, and it, it lists the lands that will um, pay for building the cathedral. So there's all sorts of place names like Wellingall you can, you can read. Um, but we've got some other uh, great, great documents uh, that we can ring, ring the changes with. Got to get the visitor infrastructure right as, as, as well. Um, and feeding people is always, is always good. This is looking at the front of the Georgian um, prism. And the Newcastle Cafe will be um, on this side. New shop will be here. You'll go in this door here to get your ticket. Um, these top two floors will be education rooms. And this is a, currently a window at the moment, but actually originally it was a door. And we're reinstating a staircase that used to be there. Um, and so when we have a school group, Actually, they'll have their own door and their own staircase. The buildings aren't easy. You know, they were never designed for um, visitors to, um, to, to go around. So we have some very tight spaces. Um, and getting the visitor flows right has been... I'm not saying we've got it right yet. Uh, it's something we're still working on. Um, but uh, getting, making sure that it actually works as a building is, is really uh, challenging. The Victorian prison. This is what it looks like now. It is the most amazing space with that huge window uh, at the end. It has, um, we will be telling most of the stories uh, about the prison in, um, in the cells because we don't want to spoil this space. When you actually walk in uh, to that space, in a way, it doesn't need a lot of explanation. You know, the ambience of it and the absolute feel of it. And actually, from some of the focus groups that we've he held, people have said, don't pretty it up. You know, don't spoil that actual sense uh, of what it is. Um, it is also a great film set, uh, and a whole variety of things have been filmed here over the years. Um, but the Downton Abbey thing that's just been um, filmed here we did get the most amazing views of, of the prison, which was, uh, and actually this is, when I showed you that East, Court, East prison yard, this is the West uh, prison yard. And when I finish with the castle, this will be tables and chairs, and you'll go and take your coffee and, and sit out there. Um, but uh, it's great to see it as it was on uh, Downton Abbey. This little building is on the, it's sort of tucked in to the north wall of the castle. It's called the Bath House. Um, it's not very big. Uh, it's actually, it looks a bit sort of dark and dingy, but when you're inside it, it's a very light, airy space. And we're actually converting it into a studio, which we will let as a sort of, um, a, a, as a business unit, hoping for a kind of tie-in with the Heritage Skills Centre. And I think it's quite important that, actually, this is a living, working building as a whole site, um, you know, with the, the Heritage Skills Centre, uh, I think sometimes a tourist attraction can seem perhaps a little bit sterile, but the fact that people are uh, actually working here, I think, is, is, is very important. We've got great stories to tell. Um, probably got more stories to tell than we've got space to tell them. Um, this is a Roman site. Um, William the Conqueror coming to Lincoln to build the castle and the cathedral. The King John, Magna Carta and Charter of the Forest, and the Battle of Lincoln Fair. So that period of 1215 to 1217 is very critical uh, for the stories that we want to tell. Because although there are four, four original 1215 Magna Cartas, so British Library have two, Salisbury Cathedral has one, and we have one. What is unique to uh, the Lincoln Magna Carta is that period, 1215 to 1217, that culminated in the Battle of, uh, of Lincoln Fair. So we want to tell the Lincoln, the Lincoln side of the stories. But, you know, think that the English Civil War, um, the separate system prison, which was, you know, this really extraordinary uh, idea that they, um, in the Victorian times, that actually you kept 
prisoners utterly separate from each other so that they didn't, the idea was that they polluted each other uh, and if you kept them separate, uh, this would, uh, it probably drove them mad. Um, and it didn't actually last very long because it actually it was an extraordinarily expensive system uh, to run. But we have records and, and we have diaries of most of the staff that work there. We, we know the prisoners who, who were there and actually we can tell stories that actually relate to the people who were there. This is actually uh, the separate system. The very first separate system was Pentonville. Um, but actually, if you look at our prison and compare it with um, Pentonville, there's lots of um, very, you know, s similarities. But at Lincoln, it's sort of the only place where you're going to actually see um, signs of that system. Now, where I showed you where Magna Carta is going to go, we are doing the most enormous archaeological dig uh, in that courtyard. Uh, and Time Team are filming uh, that as part of one of their, not one of their ordinary programmes, it's one of their um, special documentaries that, that they do, uh, and that will go out in uh, 2013, uh, and Tony Robinson has been, been here. Uh, and again, it's sort of upping the profile of what we're doing. So, um, you know, the, the Downton Abbeys and the, and the Time Teams, it's, it's all good for what we're trying to do to explain about what we're, what we're doing. So what else have I been uh, up to? Uh, we have set up the Historic Lincoln Trust. Uh, that picture there is uh, Lord Cormac, um, who um, originates from Lincolnshire and has just returned uh, to live in Lincoln. Uh, and we have some fundraising, although we've got some massive grants from uh, Heritage Lottery and from Europe, we still actually have a small funding gap. Uh, and so Lord Cormac is uh, leading on that work uh, for getting the last bit of money in. I'm also not seeing the castle in isolation from everything else that's, that's happening. Uh, it's no point me doing all the castle work. You know, we're looking to double our figures uh, dramatically. Uh, and, you know, that will have impacts. And so I am, you know, I park and ride is something that um, is very important for, for Lincoln. You know, we need to make sure that the visitor has a good experience uh, when they, you know, the experience doesn't start, as you know, you know, when they walk in through your door. Um, it starts earlier than that. And if they arrive having had a bad experience, it can be really difficult pulling back from that. So visitor welcome, customer care, and making sure that whole experience is good is very important. The cafe and the shop we need to make sure that uh, I want the, um, the cafe to be local produce, of course, um, and to be, you know, somewhere that's, you know, a destination visit. New staff, there will be a lot more new staff taken on at the castle because actually it will be a much bigger operation. And actually we have Rachel Thomas, um, who is the new castle development manager here. Uh, she's been, how long have you been here, Rachel? Is it a week? And, uh, but we have a new manager for the Heritage Skills Centre. Uh, she's been in post, I think, just over a month. Um, and other staff who are beginning to develop education programmes, volunteer programmes, all, all sorts of things. The marketing and PR is going to be absolutely critical that people actually know uh, what, what we're doing. Uh, and uh, as, as I mentioned, education and, and volunteering. We are actually looking to up school visits from 10,000 school children a year, which is what we currently have, to 20,000. It's quite a big ask, actually. Um, so uh, quite a lot to do there. This is how it looks now. Um, obviously, it would still look largely the same. 22 million can't help but improve the castle and, and, and repair it. But I don't want it just to be you know, good. I want it to be excellent. And I think, and I think that's what we, excellence is what we should be aiming for. You know, that it is a great quality experience uh, and, you know, it actually shows off what Lincoln and Lincolnshire has to offer. But we do need to be ready and we don't want to do a David Cameron and not know what sort of anything about Magna Carta. And I would hope that everybody in the sort of tourist industry will feel very behind this project uh, and actually be very uh, supportive and, and, and know what's go going on uh, to promote it to your visitors and customers and when we we're aiming to have all the work complete by 
uh, late 2014. But through that first three months of the year, January through March, I want everybody um, to be running from, I shall be running familiarisation visits for hoteliers, B&Bs, all sorts of businesses throughout the county to come and have a look what we've done. Taxi drivers, anybody, car park attendants, I want them to know what, uh, what we've done at Lincoln Castle so they can uh, show off about what we've uh, been doing. Because, you know, this is one of the biggest projects, biggest heritage projects in the East Midlands, uh, and we do need to shout about it. And that's me. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Hello, hello, hello. You can hear me just about. Uh, Mary, thank you very much indeed for that. I'm going to put my name down to come on one of the, the stonemasonry courses because that sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, questions for Mary then about this whole development. If you stick your hand up, I'll come to you and you can put some questions. Um, a couple of points I've got as well that I'd, I'd like to bring up during the course of the discussion as well. But uh, just introduce yourself first of all, please. Uh, hi, I'm Ray Biggs from a much smaller castle, Grimsthorpe Castle, down at the south of the county. Uh, Mary, I just fascinating project, looks terribly exciting. Uh, I'd like to know what your projected figures are for visitors, let's say by 2020. Well, we're looking for uh, to about a quarter of a million uh, visitor figures um, in our, in our opening year, and I think that we have got projections, and I'm very happy to, to send you them, uh, Ray, uh, in, our, in, our, in our business plan. I think that you always get a sort of a plateauing off. You know, as I think that 2015, people will be coming to see where £22 million pounds has, been, has been spent. So I think we can ex expect a very busy year in 2015. Mm -hmm. I, the one uh, thing that I didn't sort of really touch upon is that um, originally the Crown Court were going to move out uh, and the whole project really started when they said, um, we want to go, you know, can you help us? That really almost started the whole thing off. And it's, uh, I just, that's, the Crown Court is this enormous building here. Now, they will go. Now, what that gives us, um, so they, they were going to go, and just before we put the bid in, uh, well, we were going to put the bid in, they said, uh, sorry, we're not going, we can't afford it. Uh, and we had to have a sort of rapid plan B, which why it took us a year longer, and that's when we decided that we would put uh, the Magna Carta vault in this sort of area here and actually open up the prison, which we hadn't got the funding to do. But what it means is that, actually, when our visitor figures start plateauing uh, off and, you know, the ex kind of the new excitement has slightly sort of worn off, we actually have a, another building to expand into when the court moves out. Now, I don't know when the court are going to move out, um, but it does give us sort of some 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 potential. I'm not sure I've really answered your question, but uh, um, we've got we've we've got a lot of a lot of potential. I'm very happy to show you the bit, the, share the visitor figures with you. Grimsthorpe Castle, one of uh, Lincolnshire's hidden gems. Yes. How, how many visitors are you getting at Grimsthorpe? Uh, in a good year, and I have to say that this year was not a good year. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can see about a very modest thirty thousand visitors a year. 22 million would be handy, wouldn't it, to, 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 to add to the coffers? <laughs> uh, it certainly would. I, I think for me, the, the more uh, important thing is how Lincoln, as a city attracting people, can then um, enable those visitors to travel further. Mm. This is a, a very big county. Mm. Always had a big challenge for uh, tourism and, and marketing tourism. But I'm hoping that somehow Lincoln itself can, can uh, act as a almost as a portal for visitors into the county yeah. and then send them out to other places. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I, that's the sort of thing I would like to yeah. uh, hear more about. Is, is this part yeah. of the, the, the funding side, that when we've talked about this and we've got this as our showcase presentation today, um, you know, the castle being revealed, it, it's to attract people to the whole county, not just yeah. to the city? I think that when we started the project and the the Historic Lincoln Partnership were absolutely in support of the fact that the sort of the big bid should be for the castle. And I think the reason was that 
Everybody could see that if the castle was working as a better visitor attraction, that would have good effects for the cathedral and other, and, and other tourist attractions in Lincoln. Because the, um, the visitor uh, dwell time in Lincoln is, you know, it's, it's a sort of a, a day trip destination, not always a full day, I think the, um, the figures show. What we want to, what we hope that that all the work we're doing here is that Lincoln becomes a short break destination because actually that castle and cathedral will become not something that you can do in one day. There will be too much uh, to do. We're not there now, uh, but that's where we want to get to. So once people start coming on a, on a short break, um, then obviously you know they have more time. Uh, and I think the thing that I notice when I'm talking to uh, visitors at the castle is a lot of the time, they're not actually staying in Lincoln. They're staying in Lincolnshire, and actually they're day-tripping into the city uh, to do the various attractions. So, which is why I think that it's, you know, this is a Lincolnshire project. Um, you know, it will, it will have benefits for the whole county, because actually we're extending the offer of what there is to do. On the specific project here, personally, I was pleased to see on the design side, when you were talking about the towers, the fact that it's not going to spoil the view that people have walking up to the castle as well. Uh, questions on the floor? Okay. Introduce yourself first, please. Um, hi, I'm Leslie Bunn. I'm from the University of Lincoln. Um, I feel very close to the castle geographically. I live on the doorstep, but also I started my career in Lincolnshire working at the castle as well. So I'm absolutely delighted that we've got this fantastic um, project going ahead and I'm really looking forward to see it. But my question is, are there gonna be schemes and opportunities for the local residents and our students at the university to enjoy this fantastic um, visitor attraction on a regular basis? Well, when the castle, in 2015, um, when all the works are complete, uh, the castle will become free access through the east and through the west gates during daylight hours. So this space becomes almost part of the, the public realm. So you will be able to enjoy uh, you know, that experience um, all day. Um, we still, for security and because of Magna Carta, we will still lock those gates at, at, uh, at night. Um, those uh, things that I showed you at the front of the building, like the cafe and the shop, you know, you'd be able to wander into to those at will. So uh, where you would pay is to go onto the walls uh, or into the, um, into the back of the uh, building to go to Magna Carta and to the Victorian prison. Uh, so that is part of the ticketed uh, offer. Um, but the, as I say, the site and the Heritage Skills Centre, you would be able to wander in uh, about it uh, at will. Which is fascinating because actually I think that it will change the whole way that people move about in Uphill Lincoln. Because, um, you know, I think this covers six acres, and you either walk around the castle one way or the other, um, and it is a kind of a, a big block. Uh, and a, it's a very, from the outside, because it was designed for d defense, it's quite an oppressive uh, building. When you're inside it, it's like an amphitheater, and it's a very, I think, a very kind of warm enclosing uh, space. But it is quite an off-putting building. So the more people that we can get almost reclaiming um, this sort of this space, which on a nice sunny day is just the most, I think, delightful space to be in. Uh, so that's how it will be come 2015. So a free picnicking area, really. Yeah. You know, th this whole, the whole, you, you will get an experience of the castle yeah. uh, for free for people that just want to pop in. Yeah. Which, which is, I think, something that's perhaps been criticised in the past, that people want to have access, they want to have a look around. This, w this will open it up to a, to a bigger audience, won't it? It will. Yes, it will. Okay, any more questions from the floor? Questions from the floor? Not at the moment. Okay, well, I've got one. Um, in the sort of uh, earlier talk, you were talking about things like park and ride and those sorts of things. How realistic is something like park and ride for, for, for Lincoln? Because it's been talked about for quite a while, hasn't it? It has been talked about for... And I think that probably a lot of work has been, been done uh, on it. Uh, the state of the economy has probably caused it to kind of slightly grind to a halt. But where what I have managed to sort of persuade my colleagues is, OK, the full park and ride was a kind of commuter stroke tourism scheme. Now, if you have a commuter scheme, then actually you're bringing in 
sort of buses at the busiest time of day. So you need actually quite an expensive scheme that really is quite because um, it's got all the bells and whistles because you, you know it's got to cope with with the commuter times. But actually, if you just have a tourism uh, park and ride, which is something that you could extend in the future when perhaps more funds are available, it actually becomes a more deliverable thing. So what we're actually looking at is delivering a tourism park and ride. Which tourists tend not to arrive at kind of you know seven seven thirty or even you know eight eight thirty, uh, and I think we can manage that. Uh, that is that is you know a bit of a cross fingers and thumbs up, but that I believe is is something that is is achievable, uh, and going for the full Monty is probably not achievable by 2015. Course, but we can but we can add to it. In the whole area there, isn't it? Because you've got the wonderful castle, you've got the cathedral, and the whole of the Balegate area of, of Lincoln. That yeah. you know, we we want to encourage people to come along and enjoy yeah. it generally. Yeah, and I think actually. Visitors to, to visitors to Lincoln, I think it's quite a daunting place to drive in. Uh, the one-way system is um, it's not necessarily counterintuitive, is it? You know, it is, oh, it, I think you often hear of visitors who've had horrendous experience getting very lost in Lincoln. Just actually, up and down Tritton Road is enough. <laughs> yes, to be I know. <laughs> um, so I think that if they can park up on the edge of, because that's then when you're once you've parked the car as a visitor. That's when your day starts, and actually getting rid of the car, not coming into the city, and kind of getting quite stressed, and and you know I don't know where I'm supposed to be, and then finding you're in the wrong bit, and and uh, park up. Um, I think I think I think I do think that is achievable. Anybody here from the highways department? <laughs> thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, the last big debate I did on the radio was to do with highways and traffic. Any any more questions for Mary about uh, the castle? Anything else at all? Yes, so you mentioned sort of opening up during the daytime. What about the evenings and uh, for uh, do's during the night? I mean, yeah. you, you sort of touched upon how it's an amphitheatre. It would yeah. suggest that it would be a great place to spend an evening yeah. concert or just picnicking yeah. or something. Probably more likely that it would be sort of ticketed um, events in the, in, in the evening. My personal view is that it would make the most beautiful uh, setting for an ice skating rink, you know, in winter, you know, you know, with the flood, you know when the buildings... Uh, a flood floodlit, which they they will be more beautifully than they are floodlit now. It will be the most amazing setting for all manner of actually evening events. And actually, the cafe, you know, there's um, we've been talking to people about having pop up um, restaurants. You know, is, that a chef can come in, take it on for the um, the evening. Security is an issue for us. The you know, it, it is a big site, um, and, you know, clearing the site at, uh, at night is, is a problem. But, no, we do want to develop the nighttime economy at the castle. Uh, and you've had events there. There have been concerts and all sorts in the past. Yeah. And also you have, uh, well, the Balegate Ball, I think, has, has been yes. held at the castle yeah. with, with a big marquee. Is that still the plan, to have yeah. that for, for events like that? Yeah, no, we're still, still very keen to run events. Uh, I think that opening the site up for free during the day gives us some challenges in terms of how we um, uh, run events. But you know, it's we've, we've looked at uh, how we're going to do it, and we, th we think we can we can achieve achieve that. Jonathan, our keynote speaker, has a question. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mary. Really fascinating to, to see and um, um, heartwarming to, to see a site like that open up to, to the public. My question really, you may not be able to answer completely in one go because you're asking for engagement um, with the local community, with shops and the providers yeah. of the broader experience of visitors. But how many jobs full-time and part-time do you imagine immediately creating through this investment? Goodness. We have had some research, we just say that, and I cannot for the life of me remember what the... But it is, it is substantial, the economic impacts that the project will have uh, and uh, you know again that was one of the reasons that our funding you know we managed to achieve such uh, such you know a large amount of grant uh, because of the economic uh, benefits and obviously they will they will grow um, and uh, so there were sort of new staff actually on site but you know the the impacts from the study that was done said that you know there would be a lot of jobs created uh, through the city as, as well um, big consultation, which I perhaps I should have mentioned when we were talking about local people. You know, focus groups will take place throughout the uh, project where we can test. We've just had some in September, um, and actually incredibly useful being able to show people 
what you're going to do so they can comment on it. And actually, you know, we have changed, we do change things when people go and we go, yeah, perhaps that's not, you know, having somebody see it with fresh eyes, they come up with some amazingly good ideas. Um, and we will still have the quarterly newsletter to explain what we're doing. So if anybody's not signed up for the quarterly newsletter, um, time you were. See Mary later. See me. Uh, any final questions for Mary? Right. You do one of those segue things to get through here. Just introduce yourself when uh, you have the mic. Hello, good morning. My name's Paula Finch. Um, I'm uh, from MB Marketing. Uh, with my marketing hat on, as you mentioned, marketing is a, a, an incredibly important aspect. Uh, and on the total historical side, um, looking at elements such as obviously the, uh, the association with the English Civil War, etc., are you looking to link up with other elements around the UK so that that actually helps to bring a lot more people into Lincolnshire yeah. as a whole? Because, of course, a lot of us, a lot of overseas travellers know about, you know, the various elements in terms of the battlefields, etc. But uh, that, that total association then with Lincoln. Yeah, very much so. Um, I was down in London at the Magna Carta Trust, uh, and there are many sites, not just the where the four... Um, 1215 Magna Cartas are, but other sites that have connections. And HLF are possibly going to coordinate a sort of a marketing trail amongst all those sites throughout the UK that have connections. Uh, I'm talking to the Battlefield Trust, who are very interested in the, the Battle of Lincoln Fair. Uh, and I think that's incredibly important that we are very joined up uh, with, with, with what we're doing. Um, and we've got so many different elements to our story, whether it's kind of Roman or, you know, all the way through until, you know, the sort of more recent history. So I think the, the number of connections that we can make uh, is, is huge. Uh, and we need to make, make those. Uh, and uh, because, you know, you can't be sort of arrogant and say, you know, you know, Lincoln, we're the only thing in town, you know, and I think that actually working together, you always achieve, achieve more. Final questions for Mary? No? Please put your hands together and thank Mary Powell, ladies and gentlemen.